Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at another uh, 35mm SLR. This time it's from Olympus and it is the OM4. Um, this is the, um, the the earlier version. There is a TI version that came later with titanium uh, top and bottom covers. But this is the standard sort of OM4 series. Um, this one does have the addition of this extra grip on the corner this was an optional extra quite rare and quite hard to find nowadays it just attaches on this side it doesn't make an awful lot of difference but it's just a nice thing to have so I'll give you an overview of this camera this was introduced in 1984 it's a manual focus uh, 35mm SLR um, it uses the OM Zuku lenses or any OM lens from a third party manufacturer that's in an OM mount gives you full aperture metering and uh, as is usual with Olympus it meters during the exposure and also does um, off the film flash exposure measurement so it's using silicon diodes um, as its metering sensors a lens cap on this one, what lens have we got on here? yeah we've got a 50mm 1.4 I do like this lens, the 1.4s. To remove the lens, that's this top little button on here. The one at the bottom, down this corner, is your stop down lever or depth of field preview. So if we stop the aperture down, push on the bottom button, and you can see there that the iris is closed up. So that's your depth of field. The top one is your release and turn it anti-clockwise about a quarter of a turn and the lens will come off let me just put a cap on that lens because there's no filter on it so okay so looking at the front here like i said we have this uh, this grip most of the ones that you see won't have this we've got a couple of lug straps um, this is the self timer um, led like the self time set a um, bit of a redesign from the earlier OM1 and OM2 and the N versions um, lens throat and in usual Olympus fashion it has the shutter speed dial around the outside of the lens throat uh, some of the nickel mats are like this as well it's very easy to use and you'll notice on the lens that the uh, the aperture selection ring is on the edge, on the outside edge of the lens. So when it's mounted, adjust the aperture, adjust the shutter speed. Very easy, quick way of working, really. This little window up here illuminates the display inside, which is an LCD. If it's too dark, too dark to see. There is an illumination button here, but I don't think this has got any batteries in it at the moment. Uh, we have a PC um, connection for flash down at the bottom here and we have a dedicated contact up here for the Olympus flash system. This enabled you to link up to nine flash guns of the T series, the T32 um, and the T45. You can connect up to nine of them and still retain through the lens automatic metering. So you could set up a studio using Olympus flash guns, although you wouldn't want to run nine flash guns with the amount of batteries you'd need to do that. You're better off using a mains powered uh, flash system. Really. On the bottom we have electrical contacts for the, uh, the drive. We have a battery socket down here, which we mess this one up. So this takes two SR44s, you can use LR44s at a push but I don't recommend it because these cameras are notorious for eating batteries and the reason for that is that there is no real off position with them, hence you need to keep a lens cap over your lens so the meter isn't doing anything. Um, plus side facing out, two batteries in there like I say use SR44s not LR44s the LR44s are cheaper but they just don't have the oomph 
this camera's got a lot, well it depends a lot on the electronics. It won't work without any batteries in it. Um, there is a sister camera which I don't have, the OM3, and that will work without batteries, that's purely mechanical. Underneath this cover here we have a drive connection for the auto drive, um, the auto winder, or for a, um, a motor drive. It says, I mean, these, <laughs> these, but it is underneath there, I'm not quite sure why that isn't coming off, I don't think they turn, oh there we go. So yeah, there's the connector for the, the motor drive, this winds and then this bit fires the shutter. Tripod bush. These were only available in the black finish, there was no chrome version of these. And this also has, with the motor drive too, that had a powered rewind as well. You don't get that with the auto winders or the motor drive one. But I haven't seen a motor drive two in about 15 years, I did have one. Well, stupidly, I sold it. They are extremely rare motor drive twos, but yeah, they're very nice if you can get hold of them. Like I said, that's the flash connection. That's a flash connection on the top. We have the film advance, um, self resetting frame counter. This is the rewind um, push down here. You'd push that to rewind rather than on the front like the OM1s and the OM2s. Shutter release button and then you've got all of this lot related to the metering. This camera has um, spot metering as well as the normal sort of um, full open aperture average kind of metering. Shutter release with a thread for the uh, cable release. And there's a button surrounding that which we'll get into in a minute which is relating to spot meter readings so we put some batteries in you can hear it and the red lights on so that means we've got juice so in the auto mode it is a aperture priority camera just like the om2 and om2n and om2 sp it doesn't have the program mode of the sp version and we also have manual which is match needle metering. So as I said now we've got a battery in it we should be able to see this lights up for use at night time or the, when the conditions are so bad you can't see. It is an LCD so they are quite hard to read. Nikon did the same thing with the F3 um, they put an illumination system into that. Here we can see the mirror and as you'll see the mirror is semi transparent because there's a secondary mirror hiding underneath it. This, unlike most SLRs, which is, this one's starting to go mouldy. Um, most SLRs have the metering in the prism up here. Um, these have the metering cells, one in that corner and one in that corner. And I think on these there's even one in the middle which is for the spot metering. The spot metering is the little 2% that you can see right in the centre there. Okay, open up the back. On the back there's just a film reminder tab and these do have the dioptric adjustment. I wear glasses and I find that's more of a nuisance because you've got to take your glasses off to use the camera and then put your glasses back on. <laughs> it's just easier to leave it with your glasses on all the time to be honest. Next to this we have our ASA ISO. It's even labelled ISO. ASA on there. Exposure compensation set here again it's the not particularly generous by today's standards two stops in a third of a stop increment standard opening of the back just pull up on the rewind lever and here we can see the inside is the pressure plate on that side the multi-slotted take-up spool sprocket drive film gate and as you can see it's a cloth horizontal shutter and this is where the film is going to go we are going to load this with film so we'll show you that in a minute and uh, if I can find my little screwdriver I 
We can show you the shutter curtains. Which are always quite interesting on these. If I lift it up, you can see behind there is the the second mirror and the semi-mirrored front mirror. And then, of course, it's not wound on. The first curtain has this pattern on it and this is used by the metering system because it's actually reading during the exposures and you can see on this one the metering cells down in the bottom of the, the floor of that area. This pattern changed, there were various revisions to it just as there was with the OM2. With the whole camera there are different sort of upgrades, there are different versions of this but they're only badged as being the same. Some of them have got notoriously bad boards in them. Um, it's important if you're going to buy an OM4 that you make sure from the seller that it is working properly because these things are notorious for failing and notorious for eating batteries. Luckily I seem to have got a good one here. So, let's go through the workings of the spot meter. This only works in the manual mode, it doesn't work in the automatic mode. Let's stick our lens back on. So, red dot to red dot. Very simple game. Uh, and just turn it clockwise until they line up. And there we have it. So we set our ASA or our ISO and today we're going to be working with uh, some more of that nice Kent here. So you set the ASA and the ISO and you'll see that the exposure compensation dial moves. Just set it back to the, the normal position in the middle. And that's all you need to do. So as I said in the auto mode it's just an aperture priority. That's a battery check function. So you'd, you'd set your uh, your aperture that you decide on and it will set the corresponding shutter speed and display it inside the viewfinder. In the manual mode it's a bit match needle but it's match needle using an LCD screen. If you want to do spot metering you push this spot button and that will put it into spot. But the button has to be partly pressed down and Oop. that's the self timer I thought the self timer was set yeah, high pitch before it gets there so you wind on push this down a little bit I'm pretty sure that LED is supposed to come on but... and then um you take your spot readings and this can take up to eight spot readings but the great thing about it is, is it averages them out so if you take a spot on the highlight and a spot on the shadow it will give you a, a, an average of the two and on the view in the viewfinder it will display i don't think you're going to be able to see this i haven't quite figured out how to do these through the viewfinder views yet but when i'm looking through the viewfinder oh not again that's cancelled. So when I'm looking through the viewfinder, I can see a plus and a minus. But then if I push the spot button, and this kitchen is so dark, I need to use the onboard illumination. So when I press the spot button, it gives me a dot for each of the readings. Like I say, you can take up to eight readings and it will um, average the readings out. The, um, the highlight and the, um, the shadow buttons give you, um, I can't remember which way it was around it is, one gives you one and two thirds stop and the other one gives you two stops under or over exposure. So if it's the highlight, I think it's going to underexpose and if it's the shadow, it's going to overexpose. And then to clear your meter readings, this little switch here has a clear on it and it has a memory so you can take your reading and you can store it in the memory. So we take your reading, pushing it down and 
then you have to twiddle that knob. Oh, too much. So it's too dark in here really for this. You need to have it illuminated. So you push down and take your reading. And you can move it somewhere else and take a reading. It's quite a complicated system, but uh, you get the idea. You can take eight different spot readings, up to eight different spot readings, and you can average them out. Uh, so that's a pretty advanced feature this time. The shutter release is quite gentle. You push it down until your finger is in contact with the surrounding areas, and then a little push, and then it will fire. It has quite a nice winding mechanism, it's a lot better than the SP version of the OM2. Um, I didn't particularly get on too well with that one, there will be a video coming up on it. But my particular example is locked up, so that's going to be more of a repair video. So this just screws back on this cover here. To be honest I'll just use this in auto. Hot shoe communicates with the, uh, the dedicated flashes. So it gives you a flash ready green light and it also with the auto exposure the green light will flash if the exposure there is correct. But like I say you'll notice that there's no off switch. So it's vital if you've got, you know, there's always got to be a body cap or a lens cap on if you've uh, if you're not using the camera and leaving the batteries in. And as we all know it's not a great idea to leave the batteries in long term because they do tend to leak. But yeah, no off switch, which is why I prefer the OM2 end to be honest. I think these are just ugly as well. Um, I don't like, like the look of them. I prefer the far more classic chrome look of the OM1 and OM2. Having said that, an OM1, N and this are my sort of default uh, Olympus cameras that I use. Yeah. So we've got a roll of this Pan 400, this nice Kentmere black and white film made by Ilford here in the UK. And just like Fuji Acros, or maybe we can't get Fuji Acros here even though it's made in the UK. Acros 2 I mean. So we just drop the film in and we just wind on. That's it, it's a very easy camera to load. Drop that down. You should see the film advancing. Now this is a check when you buy any of these OM2s or OM4s. As you can see I've got a cap on it and I've just pressed the shutter button. So what's happened now is the shutter has opened and it's trying to figure out I haven't had enough exposure. So in the auto mode, when you press the shutter, it should stay open until you take the cap off and you get enough light in. There you go. That's how you can check them out whether they're actually working. Because it meters during the exposure from the light reflected from the actual film itself. Very clever. Um, and it can also deal with changing lighting situations. That's the great thing about this metering system. Is that you're not metering before the exposure. You're metering during the exposure. There's actually two different systems. There's one system that shows you what its exposure it thinks should be and then there's the actual metering system that controls the proper exposure. Right, put film in it. I've got a cover down there so I think that's probably the, the winder cover and I'm going to put a winder on this one because I like winders. Before winders got built into cameras, they used to come as a, a separate accessory. Um, this is an auto winder, it only advances the film at a fairly slow rate. It does have a single or a sequence. I think it runs about two frames a second tops compared to the motor drive that can run up to um, five frames a second. So this doesn't have the power rewind. But once you've removed this cog cover from the bottom, this bit just screws on, which I don't think it fits on with that cover in place. So you have to remove this cover, can you just put your coin in? If you find these, they're worth investing in these little 
thing with grips because they are very expensive to buy. Now this also fits the OM2 SP as well and the OM3. Oops, they all sort of share the same body. As you can see it's just a little little piece of plastic like so. Don't know what these are making now. They used to be making about £50 on eBay. The other thing you notice with this camera is that the hot shoe is built in, unlike the early ones where they're always cracked, especially shoe fours. Again, if you can find a shoe four that's got no cracks in it, it's a good investment. Well, depending on the price they're asking for it. So this just attaches on the bottom. You just screw that up into the tripod bush. He says. There we go, so it's nice and tight. It doesn't add much to the camera really, and it just gives you, to me, it's a lot nicer grip to use. And uh, there's a button on the bottom, so we've got single off. This runs on uh, four batteries. Always something ends up on the floor. This runs on four batteries. I think this is the bad one actually. Judging by the state of that, you can see there's been quite a bit of uh, corrosion in there, so I don't think this is a particularly good one. Just unscrew it, they're very easy to change. I do have the full blown motor drive one, but they're a bit of an issue with the battery pack, so I'm trying to make a modified battery pack. Um, the big grip that takes something like 12. Um, double A batteries, they're again almost impossible to find. Um, but these are Winder 2s, these are quite common. This is to drive a 250 film back, um, which goes on the back of the camera and takes, as it implies, 250 exposure length. On there, it's also got the remote control, you can just plug that into there. Winder 2, this is also for connections to the back. And this one, I think, has got batteries in it. This takes four AA batteries. So. But yeah, getting back to the motor drives, I'm trying to do a modification using two 9 volt rechargeable batteries. Uh, that'll give me 18 volts. Um, if they're linked in series, that'll give me 18 volts. And that would be very useful indeed. Although, to be fair, I've had other cameras that have got built in the motor drives now. Set that on single, and away we go. So you can just push on, on that. A bit noisy, but it's just I find them a lot easier to use with those on there. So I need to make sure I don't lose that. I did lose the lens cap that went on the floor. So that's about it for the Olympus OM4. Rather nice cameras in terms of their specification. Top shutter speed's a bit higher at 2000 as well. Uh, ISO range uh, from 6 to 3200. So it covers uh, every sort of film you can think of. Don't forget with these, all we'll store them with the lens covered or a body cap on it to save the batteries. And yeah, um, I do recommend them, but I prefer personally the ON2N. That's a far better looking camera, I think. Like I say, these were made right the way through to Olympus stock production, which was late 90s. There is an Olympus ON2000. Um, I would ignore that completely. That's actually a... Oh, who makes that now? It's a third party camera. Cosina, I think, actually make it. It's the same as the Nikon FG20. I think that's the same camera. It's got the shutter speed dial on the top. It's got no resemblance. It's a, a standard designed camera with an OM mount fitted onto it. It doesn't even have the shutter speed mount. Yeah, it's like right there. So the OM2000, I don't really regard that as being a proper OM. But yeah, these are made up until the late 1980s. Um, Olympus sold off all their OM stuff in the early 2000s. I bought a load of uh, OM stuff sort of 2004 when the Americans emptied out their OM warehouses. 
but yeah, that is the OM4. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Questions, comments, queries down below. It's a system I've used on and off for over 20 years, so uh, um, I've got most of it. I've got most of the lenses, and they are really nice. And uh, I've got quite a lot of the accessories and the flash guns. I haven't got any of the bolt backs because I never had the use for them. They were a little bit specialised. But yeah, comments, questions, queries down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that sort of good stuff. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one.